Life Audio. The truth is, the enemy doesn't want you to study the Bible. And so we have to set ourselves up for success because he's going to try to distract you and discourage you any way, shape, or form. And usually what happens is people start off doing great. The first week or two, they're on it, they're, they're in there five days a week, and they're doing great. And then by about week three, they might miss one day. So then they catch up the next day, and then something else happens, and later on, maybe that week or the, the following week, they miss two days. And then what ends up happening is, is people feel behind, and then they give up. I don't want that to happen to you. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at my top 10 tips for setting yourself up for a successful Bible study, because friend, I want you to succeed. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Today we are continuing our new series on the She Hears Bible Study that comes out June 29th. And I thought before we get started with the actual content of the Bible study, it would be really helpful to go through some tips for making the best use of your time in the Bible study and kind of getting the most out of it. So we're going to go through 10 tips today that I have for you when it comes to Bible study. And these are in no particular order. It's just some things I jotted down and things that I share with women when I'm teaching them in a church setting or conference or something like that. Because I think what happens, um, what has happened for me anyway in the past, I'm not going to lump you into this category, but for women I know and for my own personal life, sometimes it's really exciting to get into a new Bible study, especially if you're part of a women's group or a friend group that's doing it and you order the Bible study and you are full throttle when it comes to the first couple weeks. And then somewhere around the halfway point, uh, life happens and things just get busy. And before you know it, you're behind and, you know, you throw in the towel. I don't want that to happen to you. And I thought, perhaps it might be good to look at some of the reasons why that happens and some ways we can prevent that. And so these are just 10 tips that I think can help set you up for success to help you get the the most out of your study and to help you kind of just make it all the way through to the end. Because again, the whole goal of this is to teach you a skill set that will help you as you study other portions of scripture. So the first one on our list, the number one I have, is preparing physically. So for this particular study, there are some materials that are recommended. Um, With any Bible study, though, the number one thing that, besides your book, the, the content of the study that you're doing, but the other thing that you really need is a good Bible. And there are lots of conversations about translations, and I might do a more in depth uh, podcast about that down the road. But for translations. Um, what I'm going to say here is use the one that you are most comfortable with, the most familiar with, um, in the study itself, there is con the biblical content that we are studying that day written out for you on that day. For the most part, I will use the new American standard Bible. That is the Bible that I used to study from. Although I consult all different versions, especially if I'm looking at a particular passage of scripture. Um, but whatever, Whatever one you're comfortable with is fine. I do have a challenge for you at the end of the last chapter together. We're going to look at the same passage of scripture five different ways from five different translations. And the reason why I do that is because some people will never change up their translations. And that can also be limiting too because different translations bring different 
aspects to the table. And so, um, especially if you're going to do a little bit deeper of a study, I think it's helpful. Sometimes you just understand things a little bit better if the wording has changed just a little bit. And, I, and that happens to me all the time. Sometimes I will even read a paraphrase just to kind of wrap my mind around a particular, maybe difficult passage, um, especially if I'm teaching children. I teach children a lot. And so I will consult different versions just to see if there's a different way to say it that, that gets to the same heart of the content without being too wordy. So as far as translations go, uh, I would just say use whatever you are comfortable with. With this study in particular, because we're using the color method, there are different colors that are recommended that you use for each of the days. Um, this can be pens. This can be highlighters. Um, I will link in the show notes some of the highlighters that I use. My favorite, to be honest, are the waxy... Uh, I don't know if you would call them gel, but it's like a, a waxy gel highlighter because they do not bleed on the pages of scripture. They don't bleed through the pages, but they're still really bright. And um, you can get those basically at you know, on Amazon at any Bible bookstore. Um, I, I, I will link some. I'm not, it's not like I have a favorite brand or anything like that. I just think that that kind, the waxy kind is probably the, my favorite because you can use that in your Bible. You can use it in the, the study itself. Um, some people use different colored pens. Just, you know, be conscious of what you're doing in your Bible. It might bleed through a little bit. And then also another note about translations. There are portions throughout the study where you are asked to look up specific scriptures to layer uh, more learning onto the concept that we're talking about that day. So you might want to highlight those. So that's why I'm saying get Bible safe ones. Um, that is just my suggestion. You don't have to, of course, you don't have to do any of this. It's all optional. But I think that is what I always try to do at the beginning of a study, making sure I have a lot of um, materials ready. And then also you might want to journal. There is journaling space in, in the pages of, of the Bible study, but sometimes what happens as you are going through things, God will start to reveal things that you don't want to lose track of, you want to write down. And of course, you can write it in the study, you might want to write it right in your Bible, but if there is uh, anything in you that says you might want to journal, I would just make sure you have one on hand. And you know, some people type that, but just kind of keep that in mind. So that is materials. Number two, preparing emotionally. I'm just going to put this out there and, and leave it with you. There are aspects of this study, and I think anytime you're studying the word, this happens. Um, but there are aspects that might bring to the surface things that God wants to heal in you. And my encouragement for you is to be committed to letting those things come up and out. And what I mean by that is, um, for me, I, I shared this last week, a lot of writing the study was healing areas that I didn't even know were broken. And my thought is that perhaps there might be some things as you get into this study that you were not prepared for, or you didn't see coming, or you didn't even know you were carrying hurts around. Um, if that comes up, let it come up. Um, the reality is, is none of us have it all together. That's why we need Jesus. Um, you will see this from the pages of the Bible study and even from the, the podcast. I don't have it all together. That's why I need Jesus. Um, and, and allowing those emotions to surface and experiencing those emotions with God, that is how we heal. And so for me, I had a lot of childhood stuff. I had a lot of uh, early 20s stuff come up. And giving that space to just be there for me to process it with the Lord, for me to engage with him on it and to kind of go through it, that was a very big part of this book for me. And I'm hoping it's going to be like that for you. So I'm just giving you that heads up. Um, anytime you do a Bible study, preparing your heart emotionally to just allow the Lord to work is really important. And th that also leads us to number three, which is spiritually there's an aspect on some of these days where I'm asking you to just be silent before the Lord. 
And that is a spiritual discipline that is really difficult for me. I, unless you haven't, I don't know if you've guessed this or not, but I'm a talker. Um, even with when I'm by myself, I talk to the Lord a lot. I mean, I'm home alone and I'm making a podcast. That's how much I talk. But my point with that is silence before the Lord is really difficult for me, but it is really powerful. And as things come up and as you are processing, also just being silent it gives God space to speak. And if we are constantly filling that space with our own words, our own thoughts, sometimes he, 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 you can't hear what he's trying to say. So that aspect of just silence, allow that to happen and allow God to just move in that place. And, um, I think you might be surprised what, what he can do if we just allow him the space to do it in. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. When we come back, we're going to continue with our 10 tips for getting the most out of your Bible study. Stay tuned. The next one, and these are what I call the practicals. um, Number four, it's okay if you are not seeing what you thought you might see. And that can mean a lot of different things. Um, I think I alluded to that last episode where I talked about how what I set out to do is not necessarily what happened. You might be starting out to study, you know, Mary, mother of Jesus, and you think you know the content or you think you know the story and then something else is revealed that isn't even relevant um, because God just kind of put put it on your heart or he reminded you that's perfectly okay. Um, A pastor I know said once, you know, there's a sermon that you preach and then there's a sermon that the people hear. There is an element of the Holy Spirit working even through the pages of the study and through this, the scriptures where, you know, we might be talking about um, Mary and God puts something on your heart about your own mom or different things like that. So that's okay and allow that to happen. Um, and also on a, on a practical side of things, We might get to a day of the week where I'm asking you to highlight all of the numbers that day. And there are no numbers that day. And you might think, what in the heck is she talking about? There are no numbers to highlight. That's okay. Part of this is getting you into the discipline of looking for numbers, even if you don't find them. And eventually what will happen is you will start to maybe even combine. Like sometimes when I'm doing this on different passages of scripture, if I kind of have read it through and I know that there's not a whole lot of numbers, I might combine timing and numbers together in that passage. That's okay. Again, you have the freedom to do this in whatever way works for you. But my caution is not to skip it because what we're trying to do is to train your mind around reading the Bible with intention, looking to and seeking to understand. Number five, use a real Bible. Now, before you write me a nasty email, yes, I understand that the Bible app is on everybody's phone. Um, And if it's not, it should be because I use the Bible app too. However, There is something so sacred about being in the word. And we live in a culture where digital media and addictions to our phone have just overtaken the world, it feels like. And I think for me, in some aspects, it is a very good example for my children to see that I have my Bible open and I'm highlighting things in different colors and I'm studying it. That is such a good example for our kids to see. And even not just our kids, but um, if you don't have kids, other people, um, as you are carrying around a Bible that's that's well-loved and full of highlights and notes, um, that is an example to, to the people around you. And there's also just this element of sacredness that happens when you're in the Word and reading the Word. It's a lot different than just having a phone in your hand. And, you know, I do use the apps, and I'm, I'm fully aware that that, that is uh, a tool that God is using. I'm fully aware of that. But if you can, use a real Bible. And that being said, I am giving you permission right now to write inside of your Bible. Um, there are, I I mentioned this before, there are whole Bibles that are created now specifically for you to write in them, journaling Bibles. And, um, I was really, I was really kind of against that for a long time because I had this beautiful Bible and I didn't want to mark it up. And I thought, what the heck? The whole point is to read it and to know it and to understand it. And if I was reading a document, I would highlight it and I would write questions and I would write notes and um, and write down things that were relevant so I could remember them. Why aren't we doing that with the scriptures? And, you know, if you don't want to write in the Bible you have, get a new one and write in that one. 
Um, if you want, you can uh, look at one of our resources page and I kind of walk through how to print out some scriptures from uh, an online resource where you can print it out and then write on there. But my encouragement really is to go ahead and write in your Bible. And if you want to get a special Bible just to write in your Bible, that's fine too. Um, but the whole point is to try to get you to a place where we're understanding that this is not just a book that should be on the shelf, but this is a book that should be in our hearts. The next one, number six, set aside a specific time. For me, I'm not the best at this um, in this season because, uh, you know, quarantine, COVID, all that kind of stuff. But in general, it is better to set a specific time, even setting a timer on your phone. So whatever time of day that you know is going to work best for you um, is really helpful. Because for me, what I would do is I would say, okay, well, I'm going to do my Bible study in the morning, except one of my kids got up early that day, or my husband went to work late, or I forgot that I needed to bake brownies for, you know, the field trip or whatever, whatever it is. Like it, it was never consistent, maybe even just like two days a week it would happen. So, you know, the average is good. But if I was not planning it just wasn't happening. So what I decided to do was set an alarm for um, a specific time where I knew my house would be quiet and I would have a reasonable amount of time alone to just study and set an alarm on my phone. Just like I have a, an appointment with anybody else, I'm setting an appointment with God. That That is really um, a really helpful way for me to make sure that I'm carving out this time. And for other women that I've talked to about this, that has been something that has really helped them as well. So setting aside a specific time to do your study. Um, you will notice the study is five days. I use the sixth day, Saturday, as catch-up day. So um, that just gives you a little bit of a buffer and margin where you can um, get caught up if, if you need to or you want to watch some videos on the content or engage in in the Facebook community it just gives you extra time for that number seven worship I will link it in the show notes but we have a specific playlist a Spotify playlist of worship music that is just suggested suggested worship for you to listen to um Maybe even not d during your study if that's distracting for you, but before or after. I think what that does for me um, is it prepares my heart to really hear from the Lord. And after I have had some time to really listen to what he has to say, the worship part kind of just makes that come alive a, a little bit more. And not only that, um, there's something special that happens in our hearts in a communication standpoint, like how God communicates to us when our hearts are fully his in a moment of worship. That's powerful. And so I always suggest worship at least once a week. I, I mean, I wish I could say I did it every day. I'm a mom. I am in you know, work full time and all those things. So I don't have time to do it every day. But what I do do is make sure that at least once a week, I have a significant portion of time carved out that I can just spend before the Lord in worship. And um, I think that's a really important aspect of just digesting all the things that God is doing in our hearts uh, during this study. The next one, number eight, is community. Um, I mentioned this before. We have a She Hears Facebook page. Um, we do have Instagram too. But um, the Facebook page is a really good place to ask questions, to ask for prayer, to engage with other people that are going through this study at the same time. I think one of the benefits of the digital space in the, in the community or the season that we're in as a culture is there are still people that are not out and about within their regular circles because of um, the restrictions that have been in place or now they're working remotely and they kept their remote jobs and we're just a little bit more isolated and even pre-pandemic we were um, in the sense that people were addicted to their phones and um, there's a lot of junk on the internet and and the she hears community page is really just a place for encouragement to be uplifted to be prayed for and just a, a soft place to land when the, you are in a world of chaos all the time you're bombarded with it so I would really encourage you to engage with that and um, also 
to share the study with your own community, whether that is your friends or your women's ministry leader or other leaders that you're serving alongside of. Because when we are studying God's word together, that's really the true definition of fellowship. I think sometimes we say, oh yeah, we had really good fellowship you know, because our friends came over for dinner. And while there's an aspect of that that's true, the true definition of fellowship is when you are engaged with each other, learning about God together. And so that there's an aspect of fellowship that has just been lost because a lot of churches weren't meeting in person or, um, you know, groups weren't meeting or we are just isolated because, you know, we might be sitting in church, but we're on our phones half the time. Um, I really want this to be a source of getting back to some of the basics as far as the way God designed us to live in community with each other. Number nine, keep going. Already, um, we were working through our launch team and it was day two and somebody started late. She said, oh, I already feel like I'm behind. And I said, you know what, just keep going. Um, the goal of this is to teach you how to hear from Jesus. This is between you and him. This is not between you and me. This is a go a guide. This is, there's no guilt here. There's no guilt. There's no shame. A friend of mine says guilt belongs in the prison system, not in the Bible. Um, and that I'd say that cheekily because we all know, of course, there's things that we can be guilty of. Um, but her point in saying that is sometimes as believers, um, we carry with us a guilt that then separates us from God. And and what I mean by that is sometimes we, like for me, I would get like three weeks into a Bible study and then get two days behind and then I'm three days behind. And then all of a sudden I, you know, a week has gone by and I haven't done my study. And then the guilt or the shame from that um, keeps me from keeping going. And I just, I have like that all or nothing mentality. So I just will stop. And I don't want that for you. Even if you were a whole month behind, just keep going, do it at your own pace. That's fine. I'm giving you the grace right now and the forgiveness. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about anything else other than you and Jesus. And so if you had a bad week, it's okay. Just come back to it. it the, the content will be there when you get back from it. The scripture will be there when you get back. Just keep going. Don't, don't throw in the towel and don't stop. And then number 10, and I think this is uh, probably one of the more important ones. So I guess I'm glad we're finishing with number 10. Number 10 is application and meditation. And what I mean by that is we will be walking through some heavy things. Um, hopefully that you will have been just opening up to the Lord about and allowing him to heal and work through but if it stays inside the pages of the Bible study, you've just wasted your time. What has to happen is it has to make its way into your heart and your mind and your spirit in a way that affects your life. And so by meditation, I mean um, really meditating on God's word for that week and what he said to you and about you and what's he, what he wants to do through you. And so... Um, Again, that's why we have Saturday and Sunday off because it gives you a time to just meditate and park those things on your heart that, that the Lord did throughout the week. And so for me, what my schedule would look like when I'm, if I was approaching this is I would do Monday through Friday, I would do my study probably at lunchtime um, on my, when I'm on my lunch break and the house is quiet. Um, I would do it Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday morning, I would have a worship time and really just meditate on the things that God <clears throat> was just downloading to my heart that week. And then also part of that meditation is that application piece. Like, what does this mean for me? What can I obey? What part of this is relevant for me? What can I take away into my relationships? And that's part of where the journaling comes in too. I think it's really helpful to journal as God is revealing things, specifics and measurable things. Um, who do you need to call? Who do you need to reach out to? Who do you need to pray for? Who do you need to forgive? Um, all of those things are going to come up and, and writing those down to not only hold yourself accountable to, but to really see them as a reminder in front of your face. Like these are the things that I need to take care of as a response to what God is showing me through this study. I think that's a really important piece. So that's, that's it for today. I think that is enough. It's a lot. And it just is hopefully something for you to consider as we start to get going. Um, I'm excited about 
diving into the material with you and to just realize that um, God has a plan for you to work in and through you. And I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you to start to realize some of this and to study some of this and to come out on the other side of this um, with maybe a little bit more peace or a little bit more confidence and knowledge of um, who he is and who he says you are. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. And again, if you have prayer requests, please reach out to me. You can find us on Instagram, on the Facebook page, at the website, um, or email. Uh, I would love to just pray for you and lift you up and um, just figure out a way that I can come alongside and serve you. So um, I'm going to pray and um, just know that you're on my heart as you're getting ready to study this. Um, I've been praying for you for a long time, but especially now as we're getting ready to do this together, um, I'm praying for God to just reveal himself in a fresh way. So let's pray. God, I thank you so much for my friend that is listening today. Lord, I thank you that you draw us in a way that we don't even understand sometimes. And you reveal yourself in a way that we can't even understand but I thank you for it. I thank you that through your spirit, you are powerful and real and relevant to our lives, and that you seek to be engaged so that we can be equipped to live in this dark world in a way that brings us freedom and peace. Lord, your word talks about the role of the Holy Spirit as an advocate, the helper for our lives. Lord, I pray even now that you would send the advocate, the helper, to engage our minds and our hearts as we prepare for this next season of examining your words about us in the pages of scripture. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the the precious gift that it is. And I thank you that we have such an amazing example of love and grace through Jesus and the picture that we have of love that comes from knowing him. God, I pray for this week that you would draw us to yourself in such a way that we would just crave you, God. Lord, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for the She Hears community, and I thank you for what you're doing in this space. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know. I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org, where there are also some really good resources to help you in your spiritual growth. I pray that they are a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.